Uh, my name is Nick Angus. I'm head of 3D here at Alt Visual Effects. Alt VFX is located in Brisbane. We've got branches in Sydney, Melbourne, Tokyo, LA. We specialize in creature visual effects, uh, but we, we kind of do everything. A anything that comes across our door in a script, we're prepared to have a, have a red hot go at. Houdini for us, is the, it's the framework that everything happens in. So effects, uh, feathers, fur, natural phenomenon effects, uh, motion graphic effects, everything's in there. I came across uh, a young man named Ty Rizinkowski on the Houdini forums. Uh, he was working as an intern, I believe, at the time and had a really nice feather tool uh, that built the individual feathers. But uh, I made contact with him and asked how far through he was with building it into a full, full-fledged full feather system. So uh, we, we went back and forth a bit and we decided we'd help him develop that. And we took that right the way through to our first first serious feather project with, with this tool. The spot was for Toyota Corolla. The bird was designed to fall in love with the car, the red car that matched the red bird. He's a Robin Redbreast a variety of bird. So it was, the animation was very much him kind of following the car around and interacting with the car. And uh, that was a challenge, making this, this photorealistic Robin Redbreast from scratch. The feather system is essentially two components. It's the feather and then the method of splatting the feather onto the bird, so to speak. Uh, the shaft is the center of the feather and the barbs are the thousands of tiny pieces that come off that. Uh, sort of recent research has shown that uh, building feathers from curves is a much better way forward. It's, it's render heavy, but it looks great. Instead of the traditional method of cards with transparency maps, we found this looks much more realistic and is much more controllable. So essentially the second part of the feather tool becomes the grooming and the, the transitioning of the feather all over the body. So instancing, initially we used instances, we groomed the directions using the existing fur tools and we kind of hacked into them to get the, the information, the normal, the up vectors out to the individual feathers, which we then instance onto the bird. Uh, fairly rigid system to begin with. We weren't curving the feathers, we were, we were grooming the feathers in place and uh, that let us kind of move into the world of the feather on the bird. The Bank of Melbourne spot was about a penguin who is dreaming of a life, uh, dreaming of a life that it doesn't have yet and what the possible future may hold in, uh, in the realms of, of a bank. What, 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 what could the bank allow this penguin to become? and uh, we kind of visualize what this penguin becomes, its career, so to speak. And uh, we visualize that through its eye and then back, back to its current point in time. And we realize it was a bit of a dream sequence. The Bank of Melbourne penguin had to interact with water at one stage. There was a bit of a spillage from the pool you'll see around the feet. So we did a little flip sim that interacted around that. I think we might've touched on the feathers a little bit, but mostly it was around the legs. The difference between the robin and the penguin is a robin's a flight-based bird with all the, all the flight feathers that entails, whereas a, a penguin is a non-flight-based bird. It was a similar, similar needs, but a different kind of feather, a very different kind of bird. Uh, the feather ch had to change a lot. It had to be harder in places, softer in places. It had to have an iridescence, like an oiliness that you find that certain glancing angles, you get these multicolored kind of sheens off the feathers. So that was something we had to address as well. And there's a sort of softness on the front and a harshness on the back. So that was very much a grouping, which we use our paint sops for. We decide where, where, the, where the front feathers are in relation to the back feathers. And we, we use the groupings to do that. The fundamental challenges of feathers are conforming to the body. Feathers tend to, tend to wrap tightly in certain parts of a bird, they conform very heavily to the body and the shape, which makes them aer aerodynamic creatures. And uh, the other is intersection. So feathers tend to grow over each other in a, in a really nice way. Whereas when you're grooming feathers, it's very easy to push them through each other. So I think that's, that was a challenge. We groomed very sensitively to that, but the next phase of our feather tool is now automating some of that, uh, that uh, de-entangling or disentangling uh, to keep them apart from each other and to be sensitive where they are based in relation to each other. 
So that's the challenge moving forward is to, is to uh, get rid of those intersections and, and grow it as traditionally as a bird would, would grow a feather. I think what makes Houdini powerful is that it's a great place to sandbox, I call it, to get in there and play and fail and win and fail and uh, experiment and prototype and then start pushing that out to artists to test. It, it's limitless. You just dive down and down and down until you hit the limit of your own knowledge.